So uh, the the according to uh, Putin uh, is that uh, the POW exchange is going to continue uh, despite whatever happened to the air crash, the shooting down of the transport plane. They will still continue to you know exchange all these POWs, and it it kind of uh, spells the this very different uh, Russian approach because we the 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 impression of Russia is or you no know, during or Russia during the Soviet Union time and before during the Russian Empire, it's always that they see people as very um, uh, dispensable. You no, know? you can. They don't really care that much about the people. No, at least that's the that's the impression that was uh, given to the rest of the world. And uh, this time around, Putin seems to to have a very different approach. Maybe because of demographic, uh, there is really you no know, the the demographic numbers are really not that good. Russia is making whatever they could to make sure that uh, they can get back as many people as they can, and that's actually very very different. Uh, Ukrainians are also very interesting. They shot down the plane. And uh, they are still going ahead with the prisoner exchange, which is also a surprise to me. I, I never I thought that the prisoner exchange is going to be suspended for some time, but no, they continue as per usual. So 100, 195 for 195, is, it also shows uh, uh, this one to one exchange is very unusual because it's always been two to one or three to one. So it could also mean that uh, now the Russia is a bit more confident. Uh, in uh, the ability, you know, their positions and to get back all these people. Maybe they know that the Ukrainians need this 195 servicemen back so that they can be sent to the front line again. So, um, so the, the these troops are more precious now for the Ukrainians to exchange back. So that could be a possibility. And um, again, uh, I'm, I want to talk about lenses. Lenses are being used so extensively right now over the every front line. In fact, even over the border region is just concerning if you are on the pro ukrainian side of your if you are looking from a ukrainian perspective this is a very very worrying uh, development because lenses are highly effective super highly effective and they are, of course lenses do not operate alone lenses are operating with a surveillance drone along with surveillance drones and um, other assets to try to spot targets and lenses are then launched because now modern lenses are super fast the x-wing version flies super fast it's not the old uh, biplane version now now it's like a you no know, star wars version that can fly super fast and it it will hit the target um and it will destroy the target so lenses are becoming really really scary and they're operating on a daily basis so many of these joe location imagine um having videos being released on lenses every single day that is unimaginable unimaginable is just way too much lenses that is being being used right now which means uh being the ukrainian forces they are they are it is a bit like the game changing uh ness of the HIMARS uh in introduction into the ukraine war it forces the russians to operate very differently in the rear i think this lancet is now causing so much problems for the ukrainians that the ukrainians will have to operate very differently in the rear as well and um which means your vehicles parking in the rear will have to be concealed as well you cannot just park it anywhere if you park it anywhere it will get destroyed so the so now everything have to be concealed and the most worst part is that the ukrainians do not have a equivalent weapon right now like lancer to be used against back against the russians so this is a another imbalance between russia and ukraine's military right now there is rumors uh uh, I think Victoria Nuland uh, is in Ukraine and uh, he, she men mentioned about some surprise and a uh, linking with some other news there's a uh, some some uh, uh, some other type of bombs or uh, homing or you no know, glide bombs that will be you no know, given to Ukraine and uh, so the Ukrainian Air Force is going to have a uh, uh, some glide bombs to be used against Russian positions which is going to be cheaper than the uh, HIMARS missiles uh, but it's equally effective so the so we will look forward and uh, look out for such developments although it is to note that uh, the ukrainians seems to be using a bit of the glide bombs already uh, which, is, which is the bombs uh, with guiding or homing capabilities but um we will continue to monitor and uh, we will see how this progress is very very bizarre uh that you no know, it wait it took two years we, because we are coming to the two years anniversary uh, anniversary it took two years for them to give ukraine some basic weapons uh, for the air force which is 
I, I, I don't know. I, I don't really like how NATO is supporting Ukraine because if you want to support the, the support fully or whatever the support they're giving Ukraine is, is like not giving your spare change to a beggar. You no know, kind of situation is uh, horrible. Although, of course, as I mentioned in the headline report that I, that I posted on the main channel, uh, $21 billion, uh, the new $21 billion for 2024 is not small change. It's also not spare change so yeah spare change so um the the russian uh, currently is still uh over the kupians front uh, i think in this region here i think the russian forces are currently just um fortifying or or no consolidating their their uh, their captures i believe in the kromoni tabaivka region i think they are they are currently consolidating and uh, I think in the next few days, we'll see the Russians attacking again uh, in this area here. And the most likely target is going to be Berestove, Pishchane, as well as Kotyalivka. So this, these three towns is going to be next. We will continue to see how this goes. I think now they are in the consolidation um, phase, which is why we saw the Ukrainian counter-attack. Uh, Crimea, as usual, nothing much to talk about. It's always the same shit. Uh, over at the Sivas front, again, uh, there is... All these bombardments on Sievers is very interesting. They are hitting Sievers quite a lot lately. And uh, Lancers operating on Sievers as well. We will continue to monitor. This is very unusual. It might spell uh, Russians' uh, intention at the Sievers front. And uh, so, firstly, I already mentioned before, it's very interesting. Uh, as I, the, my prediction have came true, the U Ukrainian control of the hills made it impossible for Russia to actually hold any positions that vacillate so until the russians make one major push at least from probably probably from the east taking some of this hill and then attack westward capturing the rest of the hill vacillate will never will never never uh, be secure so it's not going to be a secure town we're going to see ukrainian forces operating at vacillate at any time uh, because there's there's not going to be any russian troops over there the ukrainians as per Joe located over here, uh, shows that they can operate uh, into Vesely at any time they want, of course, at the risk of dying. So uh, so that's that's the Vesely situation. Very, very interesting. Um, Bakhmut remains more or less the same. Uh, this, this battle in the, in the southeastern part of Botanivka is like a joke right now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting sick of the cemetery jokes, uh, so I'm not going to talk about cemetery jokes anymore. Uh, but again, Lancet, operating in this area here uh, amazing so uh and uh nothing much about to talk about holivka i mentioned before about the importance of holivka already uh in the previous conclusions so over at the uh, edfk front uh situation uh got a bit bogged down i think for the russians uh you russians are pushing uh in this southern uh, neighborhood but the ukrainian counter attacks is really putting them uh into a lot of uh, difficulty to move around uh, move around the front line have basically went stagnant uh russian forces attacking uh, over at the filtration station uh continues to be a concern because this area here is so far from the the rest of the front line reinforcement to this position is going to be really really troublesome so it's not impossible just troublesome so we shall continue to monitor uh these areas here and um novo Mihalivka, uh particular is very uh interesting because other after i mentioned about the ukrainian uh, disclaim of this area here of the managery uh fortified position now they have conceded that the russian forces have taken this heavy fortification as well in this position so in the very in the span of like a few days two three days suddenly the ukrainians have uh the ukrainian map mapping has basically aligned themselves with the russian mapping in the space of two three days and i don't believe that the russian forces captured this within two three days so so most likely is that they are now just slowly uh coming up to date with the actual situation on the ground um maybe due to certain information some geolocation that came out that they were no they are no longer able to delay this information um so because the russian claims in this area has been a long time coming so it is a bit um yeah it was very concerning for me because this 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 much of a uh, 
conflict of the mapping is very concerning you know it's, it shows that uh, there is a huge disparate uh, disparity between the two and uh, now we have this all acknowledged it's very good now we know the front line is definitely around this area here so uh yeah we definitely now know the real situation right now uh russian forces continue to push towards uh the the road and i mentioned before this this is a major artillery uh between uh Vos voleda and uh Konstantinivka. so we will continue to monitor and see how far the Russians can push. It's going to be very difficult uh, because this is a very huge expense of land. And uh, of course, I also mentioned a lot many times already. I'm very concerned about Zelitaneva. We will continue to monitor. I'm not so concerned about the rest, like the Prione region. This is not very concerning for me. Um, and we move uh, over the Orikiv sector. Uh, the Russians continue to threaten a double pincer. I would say threaten because it doesn't feel very... Uh, uh, committed by the Russians with the attack towards um, Malatomashka and in, in this area of Novo Andreevka, Novo Denilivka, or Kiev, this area here. So this outer pincer continues to be very uncommitted and the inner pincer continues to be very positional in nature. It doesn't feel like the Russians are really in a rush to capture ground. So uh, whatever happening at the Orkiv sector is starting to look a lot like Crimea front. Uh, where there's a lot of fighting but the front line never changes and uh, of course Kayamsky sector as I mentioned before the probing continues so we have a uh, step away previously over, over on the 24th and then we have Piatikaki, Zerebianki, Kayamsky is the last one now we have Zerebian, uh, Shibaki so the Russians are probing everywhere this is going to be very difficult for the Ukrainians to uh, move around if you look closer uh, you can see that there's the roads are all the small roads in the rear positions and uh, the main road over here is definitely going to be uh, heavily monitored by the Russian forces so moving troops around uh, this area here is very troublesome for the Ukrainian forces so all this probing is going to just create more logistical problems for the Ukrainian forces and of course uh, surprise surprise Ukrainian forces reinforce uh, Krinky you know, just as I was starting to duck myself, you know, I was thinking, is Krinky still around? Is it, you no, know, is it gone? Is it, because we have no reports about Krinky for a long time already, maybe a week or two weeks. Uh, we only have very vague information from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry talking about, you no, know, the Russians are still pushing the, the, the bridge heads. And suddenly we have the reports from Raiba talking about Krinky again. So, yeah, Krinky holds. And uh, anyway, this is the simrap for the day of 706 to 707 for the 30 to 31st of january do press the like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next update